UTPA men's basketball looking to knock off the WAC regular season champs. UTPA women's basketball with a crazy debut in the WAC tournament. And UTPA baseball makes history. This is Brown Country. Welcome to Brown Country. I'm Jonah Goldberg. The University of Texas Pan American men's basketball team entered the Western Athletic Conference Tournament in Las Vegas as the eighth seed, but feeling pretty good about a quarterfinals matchup with the top seeded Utah Valley Wolverines, a team the Bronx held to 45 points on 26.4% shooting just a week and a half prior, and a team that, despite generally being favored, had never before won a conference tournament game. Pick it up in the opening minute, Bronx down 2-0, but Jack Hines ties the game at 2. A minute later, game tied at 4, and Hurley Johnson had a big game. Puts the Bronx up 7-4, more from the senior in a moment. But first, the Wolverines score 6 straight, so we go to another senior, Josh Cleveland with the hook. Bronx within 1. The Wolverines trying to pull away, up 18-12, but Johnson hits the first of all will be back-to-back layups. And then, down 2018, Hines hits a jumper and a floater. Ties the game at 20, but the Wolverines hit 11 of their next 12 shots to close the half on a 31-5 run. They pull away for the 83-63 win. The Bronx actually outscored the Wolverines 38-32 in the second half, getting as close as 12 in large part because of Shaq Boga, who scored 19 of his team-high 21 points in the second half. In his finale, Johnson scored a career-high 16 points on 6 of 9 shooting, including a pair of threes. Hines also in double figures with 14. After the game, Coach Hipscher, Boga, and Hines addressed the media. Well, we hung in there. I mean, it was 20-all uh, and uh, had a possession to take the lead and didn't convert, and they came down, and, and they just kept it going. I mean, uh, Give them credit. Uh, our kids uh, were defending, trying to defend, and 80% in the first half. Uh, yeah, there were a few mistakes, but they also took advantage of, of opportunities and really shot the ball well and, and played with great discipline offensively and, uh, you know, built a lead that made it tough for us to make a, a push all the way back in the second half. You know, it, 10, 15 points, you got a shot. 20, 25 is a little tougher. I think we got it back to 13 and had the ball with a, a look to cut it to 10. But, uh, you know, it's we were 11 for 22 at the free throw line. So it uh, makes it difficult to get a comeback. We'll go ahead and take a couple of questions. Go ahead, here in the front. As you said, Coach, you guys were really in that up until about the 10-minute mark, and then uh, UVU goes on that 18-to-1 run. What do you tell your guys in that first timeout coming off that run? Well, you just try to, you know, hey, they're they're shooting the ball well. You know, we got to get past this run. We, you know, try to get them locked down, try to get it slowed down, but don't, you know, don't get dejected. You know, kids start staring over the bench after they make about seven in a row, but it's. Uh, you guys keep fighting through it, but uh, they really never did slow down offensively. I mean, they shot and passed the ball really well and, and played really well. You know, there's some nights you go out there, and you know what everybody's got to understand is both teams are trying to win, and and they had a night that made it very difficult for us to win. And okay, looking at the the line for. Uh being aired, the, the post player there for UVU. 13 rebounds is a significant number for him. Um, so what do you tell your post players, even though they're a little bit undersized, to help them kind of battle in that position? Just try to keep fighting, you know. It's size and strength, but uh, you just got to keep working. You know, his rebounds didn't hurt us on the offensive end, at least. You know, he got 12 defensive rebounds, and we made good effort on the glass. Shot got a couple, Leathers got a couple, but, uh, you know, we, we were missing – you know, his 13 defensive rebounds is impressive in the fact that 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 you know they're they're on the defensive end, ending possessions. So you know he you just have to deal with it. It's hard to stop a guy that's got that kind of size and strength and has position on you defensively getting rebounds. You know. And what do you uh, what did you tell your team at half coming out? You're you're down 26 at half, but then come back kind of on a flurry there to open. Just keep, keep fighting like they have all year long. You know the, these kids have. Uh, as I told them, I've been proud of them all year. They they fought 
through adversity at all times. Uh, they've never said die, and they battled again the second half and, and made a game out of it. Uh, I think we had it, like I say, down to 13 under the 10-minute mark, which is what kind of a goal we wanted to get to, cut half of it. But then it's hard to just keep climbing over that top. And, uh, you know, again, struggling at the free throw line was part of that. Boga, looking at, a, at your stat line for the night, you found a nice little pocket there in the second half from, from deep. Uh, was that something they were kind of showing you in their zone, or did you have to take some initiative to find that pocket? Um, I just was trying to be aggressive, trying to get the team back into the game. Nothing, you know what I'm saying, just read, making reads, trying to make reads off, off what coach was calling. And then Hines, uh, a couple of times there, you found yourself up against Aird as, as you guys kind of went to a smaller lineup there when um, – Cleveland got into foul trouble. What's it feel like uh, being so undersized against Aaron and trying to kind of block up against him? Um, definitely a tough thing, but I think I did a good job of fronting him and uh, not let him catch the ball easy and not let him get good, um, good position. That's good. And then looking at um, kind of the way that that game ended off for you guys, you, you got the run, as Coach said, bringing it down to 13. Uh, as a team, what do you guys kind of feel when you start to see that lead chip down and, and you get back within striking distance? Just try to keep calm and get over the hump. Keep pushing, keep pushing. It's tough. I'm looking at too many of them guys. They didn't miss a lot of shots. Eight for eight, three for four, four for six, four for five. That's, that's tough. Yeah, you 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 got to give a you know a dog is due. I mean, you know, some days you're out there and y y you can't shoot eighty percent. Sometimes when you're in the gym by yourself, okay. So it's their day. They played well. They're good shooting kids. They work hard and and they had their day. So it's uh, you know uh, give them credit. You know, it's uh, yeah, they played well. Any other questions? Has anyone shot that well against you guys this season? No. Well, not really, not, especially not from the perimeter. You know, even the high-level teams we played, <laughs> nobody shot it like that. Uh, New Mexico State had a really good uh, game against us uh, a few weeks back. But, you know, dealing with them is a little different. That's, that's dealing with 7, 5, 6, 10 on the block. And I think their two post guys were – 15 for 16 from the field for the game, you know, so this was different. This was executing shooting the ball and uh, no, nobody's shot it like that. And, uh, and uh, like I say, give them credit. Uh, they're great kids. They work hard and, and, and they shot the ball well. Coach, uh, as far as them being the number one seed, how much was that discussed or just thought about that, hey, try and stay in that, put some pressure on them? until? Well, you know, we had played well out there a, a couple weeks ago and felt like, you know, if we could continue to, to pressure them and, and, and force them into tough shots. But, you know, tonight, you know, I don't care whether it was cutting or, or dribbling or, you know, they were hitting some fadeaways, some some contested shots at times you know Berniel he's eight for eight but Shaq was chasing him around some curls and he had some tough shots over people but uh, you know they're the number one seed for a reason okay we we were six what a sixth place tie I guess you know with three teams so you end up eight against them but at least it wasn't some of the massive size differentials that we have at certain times of the year and uh, you know a team like we felt we could compete against but like, like I say you know give them their due they they played really really well and and you know, uh, we didn't play that poorly for for us. I mean, we shot 45 percent. You know, 11 assists, five turnovers. Uh, we didn't shoot the three really well, and free throws we struggled. But our execution was actually pretty good. It was just hard to handle that onslaught. You know, women's basketball team also participating in its first ever WAC tournament. Next on Bronc Country, we take you right back to Las Vegas. Brave and bold, silver and gold. We are on a mission. Aggie up. Bronc country just got a whole lot bigger. Mighty Wolverines of UVU. Join the herd. Lopes up. Bold moves, big season, grew up. We are the new gold standard. We will be champions. We are the Western Athletic Conference. They are the dreamers and the promise of the future. They are the hope who will lead us to tomorrow. They are the givers 
who have the passion to serve. They are the visionaries who will celebrate discovery. They will make a difference. They will change South Texas. The University of Texas Pan American women's basketball team entered the Western Athletic Conference Tournament as the number four seed after a historic regular season that saw the Bronx tie the program records for wins and conference wins in a season, facing off against fifth seed in New Mexico State, a team the Bronx split with during the regular season. And the Bronx came galloping out of the gate. Opening minute, Jasmine Thompson connects for the first points of the game. Two minutes later, still two to nothing, make it five to nothing. Kaylin Boyd from downtown. After a free throw makes it six zip, Thompson with a miss, but she follows for the rebound and puts it back in. Eight to nothing Bronx. Now it's eight two, make it 10 two. Boyd with the floater. A Little later on, Bronx lead cut to five, but Boyd having none of that. Hits the runner, Bronx up 13 seven. One minute later, it's 13 nine, but after Boyd misses the layup, she follows for the rebound and feeds Preston underneath, 15 to nine Bronx. And then Jose Wright, contributing off the bench. 18-12 Bronx, they led by as many as 15. In the second half though, the Aggies went off. Bronx down two and Preston hits this layup to tie the game at 57. But the Aggies went on a 26-9 run to go up 17 for holding on for an 86-74 win. Great game for Boyd to close out the season, scoring 21 points on six of 13 shooting, hit a pair of threes and went seven for 12 from the line, while filling the stat sheet with eight boards, five assists, and three steals. WAC Freshman of the Year, Shante Goff finished up with a bang as well, scoring 20 points on seven of 17 shooting while hitting a pair of threes. Thompson not sure for his double-double with 18 points and a career-high 12 rebounds. After the game, Coach Tidwell, Boyd, and Goff addressed the media. We played a very good first half, and New Mexico State have played a better second half. And it came down to uh, hitting shots there in the second half, and they outscored us 50 to 26. They had players really step up that we knew could step up. Uh, number 11, uh, number four, number four hit some really big shots on us. And they have a good team, and uh, they just got the better of us in the second half, and they went to the boards extremely well. Uh, out rebounded us by two but we had them by eight in the first half I believe and you know when it gets down to rebounding and getting easy putbacks that's a big difference and uh, you know it is what it is we just got to get better at rebounding got to play better defense and then two um, we've got to we got to make shots and that's what it boils down to we got to make shots so second half I think we shot 35 um, percent and so we've got to get uh, adjusted. You know, next year's team hopefully will have some people inside that can score to complement these two guards that I'm very proud of. They played really hard tonight. They played hard all season. And I'm very, very pleased to know that my front court with uh, KK Boyd and, and uh, Shante Goff is in good hands. I think a big difference in this game tonight was, you know, Brittany Bush played nine minutes and couldn't play the first half. She's got a chronic back injury and spasms in her back and she couldn't play. And, you know, when they kick it inside and kick it out, I mean, we've got to give help. And when we give help, it leaves shooters open. And uh, so I, I appreciate the efforts I got inside from JT, Tom, JT Thompson. I mean, JT plays hard. I uh, appreciate the effort, you know, that, that we got from, uh, from, oh, Maybe that's it. <laughs> but uh, Shazay Wright plays hard in there. Uh, Sherelle Price plays hard. So, you know, Rock gave us some, some good minutes. But, you know, it's again, we're a little bit undersized there. And, you know, we've got to give help on the dribble drive. And they got some good shooters, and you've got to give them credit. Because the one that was hitting the shots, number four, she's technically a four player. You know, and we're guarding with, with the guards. So, you know, if they hit shots, and you got to give them credit. And looking at, at uh kind of happened with you guys with Weber a lot of those shots she took she had a hand in her face somebody was there and she made the shots so what do you do uh, defensively 
to, to kind of counteract something like well, that? Well, what, what we did tonight, I mean, we we looked at, uh, we zoned them. We run a one, two, two, we run a two, three, we run a man, we switched. It's a lot of smoke and mirrors. When you, when you don't have something inside that can stop the penetration, then you, you have a lot of different things that you've got to do, and then when they kick it out, it's going to be open because you, you got other people helping. So, you know, you got to give her credit. She, uh, she knocked down some good, some big time shots. Certainly, and you guys had a lot of uh, balance and offense today. Three uh, girls reached double figures, which for you guys is typically a winning combination. If you can get three girls in double figures, do you think um, to be competitive in the WAC, you need to have maybe have a fourth score that can put up those kind of numbers? What's that? Do you think you need four uh, players to be competitive in the WAC that can hit double figures, or is three enough like you had tonight? Yeah, that's enough, but you got to have some other complimentary scores. You know, like Bush tonight. You know, Bush has been playing pretty good for us. No points, uh, three rebounds in nine minutes. And then Tanisha Walker usually is going to get us about six or eight points. And, you know, she didn't hit tonight. And she had some wide open looks. And, you know, you just got to you just got to hope that somebody's going to have the hot hand. And in the second half, we just didn't have that hot hand. We shot, again, like, you know, 30, 35 percent from the field. But, you know, New Mexico State, 50 percent. And a lot of that came from inside out. You know, a lot of those threes come from inside out. That's your best threes. When you get penetration, kick it out after somebody's helped, you're wide open. Got to give them credit. We just didn't didn't get it done. And KK, looking at your, your box score for tonight, you've got kind of an interesting perspective on this. First year under Coach Tidwell, and then you uh, were with the team last year. So uh, what did you feel differently from uh, tonight's game and this season as compared to, to what you saw last year? Um, tonight's game was a big step. Uh, we would have won this game would have been big for the university for the program for us as a team because we played hard all year and to come and fall short after we had the lead in the first half is just a, a setback for a major comeback so it's always next year but you wouldn't want to say that right now you wouldn't want to push through and get to the next two games to get to the ring and led the team in scoring tonight, led the team in assists, second on the team in rebounds. Kind of a good all around effort for you. Uh, looking going into next season and, and the rest of your career, uh, what, what do you kind of expect for yourself uh, as the WAC continues for you? Um, I expect for me to just uh, better my game to better my teammates' game. So anything I have to do to make my teammates better, I'm going to do. So if it's grabbing a few rebounds, I'm just going to do that. If it's passing the ball a lot more than, and turning down my shot, I'm going to do that. So I'm all about just trying to win and trying to get this po program on the right track. And Shantae, a, a freshman putting up the kind of numbers you put up is, is rare, especially in a league like the WAC. Uh, looking back on, on tonight's game, uh, how do you think it went for you? Um, I, think, I think I played pretty well. I know there's a couple of things that I, I could have did better. And, uh, you know, if I felt like I gave my all, but if I, if I go back and think like, well, I could have did this or I could have did that, then maybe I didn't play my, my best, but I'm, I'll make sure that that never happens again. The UTPA baseball team had some history to celebrate this past week. Coming up on Brunk Country, it's an upset special in Stillwater. On February 25th, the UTPA baseball team came within an out of knocking off then number 15 Texas. Fast forward two and a half weeks and the Bronx are again visiting the number 15 team in the nation, this time Oklahoma State, and this time it was a Friday, which could mean only one thing. Sam Street was on the mound. Pick it up in the bottom of the first, Cowboys with runners on the corners and one out, Street gets Tanner Kreitermeyer to foul out. And then it's Connor Costello on the ground to short. Street escapes the jam. Now the Bronx got Street some early support. Top of the first, after a two out single by Brian Ramirez, Alberto Morales delivers. Doubles to left, and this is the advantage of having a speedy runner in front of Morales. Ramirez scores all the way from first. Bronx up 1-0. On to the second, and it's time for the Bronx to take advantage of opportunities. Michael Bach in a second, Oops, the Bronx have a one out base runner. During the next at bat, Baca on the move and the throw goes into center field. Baca heads for third and now an out can score a run. And that's exactly what the Bronx are gonna do. Suicide squeeze by Jacob Huckabee 
Two to nothing Bronx. Base is clean, two outs in the fourth, and Dylan Engelhardt gets into one to left. His first home run of the season, Bronx up three nothing. The Cowboys got one back in the bottom of the fourth, but with the tying run at the plate and two outs, Street takes care of business. Soiler Saxon down looking, one of four Ks for Street. On to the ninth, the Cowboys load the bases with two outs, so for the first time since opening day, the Bronx go to the bullpen on a Friday, and Matthew Harrell comes up big. Gets Donnie Walton to ground into a fielder's choice. The Bronx pick up their first win over a ranked opponent in two years, three to one over 15th ranked Oklahoma State. Obviously it's really exciting, I mean, as, as exciting as it is, as it is though, uh, it's not something that we felt was uh, out of reach at all. Like we went, played close to UT earlier in the year and you know, they're the teams that we're going up against and we really want to get after and we feel like we can beat them. The Bronx came pretty close to sweeping the three game series, dropping game two, four to three and game three, seven, six. The Cowboys broke a three, three tie in the eighth of game two and scored two unearned runs with two outs in the ninth of game three to come back against the Bronx. And while the Bronx would rather have been 3-0 than 1-2, the meaning of how well the Bronx played in the series goes beyond wins and losses. Number 15 in the country, it just shows that if we play our brand of baseball the way we can, that we can match it with the best of them. So uh, that's huge going into the whack. We played very well against a 15th ranked team. Uh, but I also told them that, you know, the games, you know, those days of just getting close, uh, we have to get over that hump. You know, we get those games, we have to win those games. And like you said, we did have the opportunity to win all three games. If you want to show your support for the Bronx, donate to the Bronx Athletic Fund today. You can become a member of the BAF for just $50 a year. All of the money raised goes directly to student athlete scholarships. So visit BronxAthleticFund.com today to see how you can make a meaningful impact on the lives of student athletes. One way you can donate to the Bronx Athletic Fund is by participating in our 8th Annual Bay Fishing Tournament, better known as BAIT, on South Padre Island on April 12th. You could be one of eight teams to win over $10,000 in cash prizes, including a $4,000 grand prize. Visit utpabronx.com slash BAIT for more information. Brave and bold, silver and gold. We are on a mission. Aggie up. Bronx country just got a whole lot bigger. Mighty Wolverines of UVU. Join the herd. Lopes up. Bold moves, big season, grew up. We are the new gold standard. We will be champions. We are the Western Athletic Conference. They are the dreamers and the promise of the future. They are the hope who will lead us to tomorrow. They are the givers who have the passion to serve. They are the visionaries who will celebrate discovery. They will make a difference. They will change South Texas. Big week coming up for the Bronx. Baseball opens up whack play at home against New Mexico State before visiting another ranked team at TCU. Men's and women's tennis hosting a doubleheader against Incarnate Word on Friday. It's senior day for both teams and the final match before the WAC championships for the women. Track and field heads to Kingsville for a tune-up before the Texas relays, while women's golf is off to Florida. We want to thank you for stamping your passport in Bronx country this week. Schedule another visit for next week. But until then, Go Brave and bold, silver and gold. We are on a mission. Aggie up. Bronx country just got a whole lot bigger. Mighty Wolverines of UVU. Join the herd. Lopes up. Bold moves, big season, grew up. 
We are the new gold standard. We will be champions. We are the Western Athletic Conference. They are the dreamers and the promise of the future. They are the hope who will lead us to tomorrow. They are the givers who have the passion to serve. They are the visionaries who will celebrate discovery. They will make a difference. They will change South Texas.